Okay, hi everyone. Um, we're a couple of minutes past the hour, so uh, I think we'll we'll get started. Um, thanks um, for joining us for this um, for this webinar on the fundamentals and benefits of Oasis LMF. Um, we are recording the session and we'll make it available um, on our YouTube channel after the call, so you can go back and have a listen if uh, if you had any uh, any points that you wanted to overview and have a look again. So my name is Matt Donovan. I head up the community engagement here at Oasis and this webinar was very much um, aimed at people that know a bit about Oasis or maybe don't even know anything. They've heard of us but don't actually know what we do. So we're going to go over um, some of the main the main points. So I'll just move on. So just briefly, a very, very quick, quick agenda. I'm going to hand over to Dickie Whitaker, the CEO of Oasis very shortly, and he's going to go through the background and aims aims of Oasis. I'll then talk a few minutes on open data standards and the importance of ODS and the role of data standards. Um, and then I will hand over to Ben Hayes, who is the CTO of Oasis. And Ben's going to talk a bit about how to run, run models in Oasis. So hopefully that'll be sort of 35, 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, and then we'll take some questions. So um, please do post any questions in the chat and we will do our best to answer them, um, answer them at the end. Okay, so if I just twist this round to Dicky, so hopefully you can see him there. There you go. That's great. Thank you very much, Matt, and welcome to you all. Um, so um, we I want to take a little bit of introduction about what Oasis is, um, first of all, and then really perhaps the drivers. So when we started Oasis just about 11 years ago now, um, part of the main focus was to sort of democratize risk is a phrase we use at the time, try to make sure that the ability to understand risk is shared as widely as possible. Um, so hence the openness concept. And of course, we are both not for profit and open and open source. So that hopefully makes sense. Um, what is Oasis? Well, you know, it's partly as the, the bullets on here say, it's partly a platform, um, but it's also a community as well. And I'm going to use, you can you can see these slides afterwards, but I want to use this one to talk about it a little bit. So on the right hand side, um, the red uh, planet is the representation of our software. So here you can see there are components you'd expect to see in a catastrophe model. So probably most of you have some idea about this. Essentially, you've got a hazard module, you've got a vulnerability component, um, you've got a financial module. So the financial module is essentially the terms and conditions that are used by the insurance industry. So these can be deductibles and aggregates. That's very important if you want to go from um, a, a ground up loss number or, or if you like gross to, to net. And we have um, one of the few industry uh, defined financial modules that is part of the software package. Um, the whole thing, of course, wraps around a simulation engine, and Ben's going to talk a tiny bit about this, but essentially that's the computational core of Oasis that allows you to use a Monte Carlo, a Monte Carlo simulation to try and um, get uh -huh. robust statistics out of this model. And, of course, um, you've got uh, user interface, various user interfaces, which we'll come to in a bit. So that's the software on the, on the red planet. Um, we then have a few other bits that are important. So we have market standards, which I'm not going to talk about right now, and Matt's going to talk about. But perhaps I should say on the market standards that um, Matt's going to focus mostly on exposure and results standards. Um, but actually, the whole of Oasis is a series of standards, essentially. The whole software is a sort of standard. Um, so that's another component that's, uh, that's important for us. Um, and then on the left-hand side, models, and I'm going to come to that in a second. Um, and then the bottom, there are sort of methods of deployment. Um, maybe one thing I should talk about before we get onto sort of models and some other components, you'll see in the red planet, something called the model development kit. I can't remember if Ben's going to talk about it. Ben says he's going to talk about it a bit, so that's right. I won't go into that. So that's sort of a little bit about Oasis. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I should mention about that. Looking at my colleagues, might have done enough on that then. Let's move um, further forward. Right. Um, how is um, Oasis funded and owned? Um, the answer to that question is that it is owned by the companies you can see on the screen. These are the members of Oasis because Oasis is constituted as a um, not-for-profit company with no equity, no shares, just members. And this is the list of members that we have at the moment. Um, and that is expanding uh, on a fairly regular basis. <clears throat> and they 
as well as being members, provide a fairly substantial part of our funding as well. So I think if you're outside of the insurance or insurance industry, um, these are some of the biggest names from the insurance, reinsurance and broking community that sort of drive how insurance works on a global basis. Um, and then if I move on to the next slide, um, I mentioned about the models and um, I suppose you could say that there's two types of models, essentially. So those, there, I mean, individual companies, firms, academics can have their own models. Um, we don't necessarily, of course, list, list those, particularly if they're not widely available. This is a list of the major firms around the world that have models available in Oasis. Um, and um, so these are, in some cases, quite large companies, um, but there's also quite small ones. Um, so there's companies like Converse in Australia. It's not that big. Um, there's companies like Catrisk there, which is also relatively small. Um, but there's also companies like CoreLogic, um, ARA and others that actually are pretty big firms. In every case, though, there is real advantage for these firms with these models, having um, the ability to put their models into Oasis, one platform is an advantage partly for the model developers, but actually it's also for the model users. If you're using models and you want to have six models representing different levels of expertise or geographical specialty, then you don't want to have six platforms. That's just really irritating and hard to consume. So by having one platform that can consume all models, um, that makes it uh, so much more efficient. And as of a few weeks ago now, um, one of the market leaders on catastrophe models, a company called RMS, which I'm sure most of you have heard of, um, has now um, allowed uh, these models in Oasis to be available specifically through uh, one of our providers called NASDAQ to be able to access those models into the new RMS platform. So that gives an even bigger uh, marketplace for the level of standardization we have and uh, essentially the sort of marketplace we have for that. Um, I think I sure we'll, you know, we'll have opportunities for questions. What are we saying about questions? People are going to ask questions. Chat ask questions in the chat. Um, so actually, I just mentioned about the RMS thing, so I won't do that again. Uh, we're working quite closely with an organization in the US called the Institutes, um, and they have uh, a specific unit within the Institute, an affiliate, that um, focuses on catastrophe risk and standards, so we have a close relationship with them. And we also have a close relationship with the Insurance Development Forum, and I think, if I remember rightly, my next slide is going to talk a little bit about that. So the IDF, or Insurance Development Forum, is a collaboration um, both from major companies inside the insurance or insurance industry, but also involving UN, World Bank, other development banks, in fact, um, and people like uh, some, some governments, including um, the German government. And one of its main flagship programs is the Global Risk Modeling Alliance, or GRMA, and the GRMA getting back to my first point about the democratization of risk, is an attempt to make sure that developing countries shouldn't be disadvantaged in being able to quantify risk. And by having a set of standards and an open platform, um, that means that through the, in this case, through the GRMA, it gives a great opportunity for uh, developing countries to be able to understand uh, risk in the same way, if you like, or the same metrics, the same inputs and outputs, and in most cases, probably the same quality without having the same costs. And part of what the GRMA is doing is using OASIS standards to be able to make that happen. So I think probably, is that my last slide? No, I've got another one. Can it's you remember? A market. It's a market thing. Oh, yes. I forgot about this one. So key market issues. So these, uh, we had a conference in um, London uh, a few a couple of months back now, and we did ask the audience there, a couple of hundred people, uh, some key questions. So these are, this first one here is really what strategic direction filters down to uh, modeling and exposure management professionals. And you can see there's a word cloud here um, that does that. And um, so I'm, I'm not going to read all of these, but I think it's interesting that uncertainty uh, in this particular case is pretty much the most frequent um, response that we got back from the audience. Um, because I think it's a real challenge. And certainly one of the things that we try and do is make sure that we explain or help explain the uncertainty that's inherent in this sort of process. And you can see actually the screenshot on the top right there, which is um, a tool that's been built by 
um, uh, a firm that we work like clo closely with that's trying to have a better representation of uncertainty. So I think that's interesting. Um, so you can see here, we just thought it'd be interesting to see what type of um, um, concerns people were focusing on, um, aside from the one I've talked about uncertainty, but I won't go into them all right now. And then the next slide was what research areas are most important for your work. And I'm sure there's nobody on this call who'd be surprised by the fact that um, climate was top of that list. Although, um, and in fact, actually, if we if we'd actually if we'd actually managed, managed to amalgamate climate change and climate, that would have made it even more clear that that was the the the, the key problem. And I'm sure, actually, what the, the the word really is climate change is not the climate by itself. Again, here we have got uncertainty and natural variability, and the same thing with the same word. And and you can see here some other things that are of interest too. So that's what drives the insurance or insurance industry. Many of you, perhaps, but not all of you. Um, so that's that's my little bit done, and I'm going to now pass back to Matt, who is going to go on to open data standards. Thank you, Dickie. Yeah, so I'm um, going to spend just a few minutes talking about ODS. Um, some of you on the call may have heard of this, some of you may not. So um, what is what is open data standards? So essentially, it is um, an open and transparent modelling data format, data schema. Um, it's developed by the market for the market. It's not an OASIS standard. We don't own it. Um, we simply create it on behalf of the insurance and reinsurance industry. Essentially um, encompasses the open exposure data format, which is OED and the ORD, the open results data format. Um, and it's model agnostic. So it's one consistent data format, regardless of model developer, model vendor. And essentially it's designed to help solve interoperability problems um, in the market and improve efficiency and transparency. And I think um, for those of you that maybe are in the market or know some, something about it, you know, working with multiple data providers, working with multiple models, multiple platforms, there is um, quite a lot of resource required for the processing, for the development and for the, the, the transfer of that data. And especially when it comes to looking at analytics, comparing model outputs, comparing platforms, things like that. Um, it can be quite resource heavy. And so the idea of ODS is to eliminate that, just to have one, one standard format. For the last three or four years, maybe five years, it has been focused on Property Cat. Um, but last year, we released the first version of a data schema for liability class. And at the beginning of this year, or April this year, we released the first version of Cyber. And we're now in talks to get um, Marine, a Marine working group to talk about the first version of a marine data standard and it's in progress and it should be out end of this year beginning of next year so oasis yeah we create it um, and we actually chair the steering committee which governs the um the sign off and the um yeah the governance of the um of the data standard and it's made up of attendees from from the companies you can see see there on the screen so some um other model vendors some large brokers, insurers and reinsurers, and we all get together three or four times a year and we simply okay updates. We sign off updates and um, implementations just to make sure that the, the fundamental or the one core operational version of that standard exists on a GitHub repository. It's completely open, free to use. You can download it from GitHub and look at the data spec and, can't, and, and start using it freely right now. Um, we do hear from people in the market that say, well, we've been using OED for our cat modeling for, for some years, and we've started um, putting our own fields in there um, for our own internal purposes, which is great, but that then doesn't turn into a standard. We then end up having multiple or hundreds of versions around the market, which essentially means it's not the standard. So what we do is we encourage people, encourage the community to um, send us feedback, send us input to give us ideas on what they think should go into the standard and then that's what the committee does we talk about it um, and we will you know develop that's how the standard develops and that's how the versions versions come out so like i said there's links here and you can um access these afterwards completely available free to download on um on github and this last point sort of takes me to my next slide and where we're taking open data standards so like i said it's very much been focused on property cat for the commercial insurance and reinsurance industry. But now what we're doing is we're trying to incorporate more um, public sector humanitarian use cases and starting to look at population information, demographic data, infrastructure, and agriculture. 
And so as a part of that, ODS version three was released at the end of last year. And like I said, it's now incorporating all of that population, demographic, socioeconomic information. And this is to align with the GED for All database, which was um, developed by um, a few people, they Gem, ImageCat and Hot. And what we're trying to do now is align ODS with other with other information, other standards. And we're working now with the GFDRR, another acronym, Global Facility for Disaster Reduction and Recovery, which is administered by the World Bank. And what they've done separately is create something called the Risk Data Library, which is the RDL. And that essentially is a common set of standards, but more for hazard exposure and more vulnerability um, information, which is used, again, more for the humanitarian disaster risk and climate space. And so what we thought would be good and we, we, what we're trying to do is work with RDL and guys at the um, at the World Bank and align these two standards, which means that you've got ODS, which focuses on commercial insurance, reinsurance information for exposure and financial information. And then RDL, like I said, is more the hazard and vulnerability side. And when we align them, we're now making it available for people that use ODS to be able to now have or capture that information for hazard and vulnerability in a more standardized way, which is used in RDL. And that then will lead to having outputs more um, based on hazard. So you can start having specific outputs for things like wind speed, flood depth, um, earthquake seismicity, severity, and things like that. So you can start building up those outputs more and more because at the moment in ODS, we don't have the standards for the um, for the hazard and vulnerability. And so rather than reinvent the wheel or duplicate efforts, we're, you know, we're aligning with, with RDL and that's something we're actually working on, working on now. And it should be sort of rolling out by, you know, I'd say in the next three to six months. So ODS is, is developing and we always encourage the community to get in touch and work with us because it's completely open dialogue. It's, um, you know, a, a transparent community and we want everyone to, to get involved and essentially we want ODS to be the market standard for this, for this sort of data. Just a bit like um, what Dickie said before, we had a conference last month in London. We um, again asked the uh, the audience about ODS. You can see there, ninety eight percent of the people that uh, you know it's quite uh, quite significant see value in ODS. Um, and then we asked another question on what percentage of of your team actually spends converting data, cleaning data, and you can see that like twenty eight percent of saying nearly a third of their time is spent cleaning up data, and then again another nearly 20% is between 15 and 30%. So a sub substantial amount of time and resource is spent on really inefficient things like cleaning data, processing data, and doing things that are really shouldn't be doing, you know, it's really inefficient. And we need to be making that better, more efficient, more transparent, which is what, what ODS aims to do. And just finally, this sort of ties in with it. So where efficiency and exposure management is most important, and 65% have said data quality, and so that ties in with, with data standards as well. So having a consistent data format like OED or ODS, it reduces the risk of um, losing that quality of data, the fidelity of data, the completeness. Whereas when you have to, like I said, process it, format it many different times, you can end up losing fidelity of data and, and, and information essentially. So it's quite um, important to the market. And that sort of highlights one of the highlights of um, you know the importance of of ODS and it's something that all models in Oasis subscribe to and we we use the OED format and now a lot more uh, brokers are now sending out or aiming to send out OED as a part of renewal packs alongside other other main um, or alternative data data formats so traction is building um, and momentum is is being gained so again after this you can see the links and go and have a look at the, the GitHub repository and, and look at the data spec for uh, for OED. I'll now hand over to Ben, who's going to talk a bit about uh, how to run a model in Oasis. Matt? So, yeah, we're going to go through very briefly some of the options for how you can run models in Oasis. I won't go through in great detail because we don't really have enough time to go through all of that, but I've I've tried to, to outline the options available depending on, on um, what your user needs are. Uh, and, and provide some pointers for my, where you might want to look. So as I say, how do you run models in Oasis? It really depends on who you are. If you're a model developer, if you're building models, then we provide a set of tools called the Model Development Kit, which Dickie alluded to earlier on. 
And this is a, a set of tools to help run the whole loss modeling framework from the command line from end to end. But it also allows you to run subsections of, of that workflow so you can build and test uh, and, and validate your model as you go. But it, it does allow you to run end to end and get results as well. So you can use it to develop and test the full model from the workstation. It is a command line tool. You don't need to install the platform per se. You can just run the code directly on your workstation. Uh, and you can install on a laptop server or in the cloud. Um, it's just a, a Python package. It's it's available through the uh, PyPy, which is the, the open source Python package uh, installation tool. Uh, and it's as simple as, as running pip install Oasis LMF from the command line. Uh, and, and it's self-documenting. So if you install that package, you'll be able to go through and, and see um, all of the options available of, of how to how to run and, and build models in Oasis using that. If, however, you're a, a more kind of traditional user, you'll probably want to install the Oasis platform. And this is a, a more traditional um, uh, approach to, to running cat models. It's not a command line tool. It is a package. It's accessible via uh, a user interface, but also via uh, a suite of APIs, which are um, open and and so undocumented as well. The OS platform is is Docker based, so it will work across whichever operating system you're working, um, either Windows, Mac, or Linux. And you can install and run models on your laptop or on a server or in the cloud. It'll work for kind of any scale of of application that you want. Um, we have I can't take you through everything now because there isn't quite enough time, but we have uh, a lot of um, videos on YouTube, which will show you how to install um, and, and run the platform on your chosen operating system. And, and once you have it installed, it's, it's all there. And there's an example model that we uh, we install as a, a demonstration model we use called PyWind for, um, for uh, testing and um, documentation. And you'll be able to go through that and see an end-to-end -end run of our example model. But we also have a number of other uh, kind of open access models, things like I think you probably see on, on the little um, image here, Dominican Republic. Um, so someone else just joining. Dominican Republic, um, earthquake model from GEM. And there are a few others out there. We have a Bangladesh model that's available uh, uh, open source as well. Um, so the Oasis platform, the standard Oasis platform is is usable for single users on a, on a, a workstation or smaller companies who want to deploy it on a server and make uh, this uh, open user interface available to to all of their employees. But moving up, sorry, on the wrong one there. What am I done here? There we go. If you're a, a, a larger company and potentially have more um, users and more needs um, around uh, volume of runs. So typically if you're running you know, hundreds of analyses a week, you might want to look at our um, Oasis Enterprise platform, which is uh, a new release that we have. Someone else joining me a sec. Can you do it? Yeah. Um, so the Oasis Enterprise platform uses um, a, a piece of technology called Kubernetes developed by Google to distribute workloads over many, many workers. So this effectively allows you to spin up lots of virtual um, computers and break large jobs up into lots and lots of small jobs and run them at scale um, very efficiently and, and very cheaply as well. Um, this is something that we released um, kind of middle of last year so it's still a relatively new product but it's it is being used in production by some uh, large insurance companies already um this would typically be run on a on-premises um server or in the cloud this isn't something that you'd, you'd necessarily do on your laptop this is really for kind of industrial scale usage uh we do have example implementations as i mentioned with the standard platform in microsoft azure um and there's a github uh, page there with you can see an example of uh, which has all of the assets to get up and running very quickly with our example model and then you can add additional models um, as you as you need to the the user interface that we provide does work with this system but more um more normal approach would be to use the api layer to systematically integrate this with um existing uh, systems uh, and pass in exposure data analysis requirements and extract results um and then the other option that is available is uh, really available for any size company, but this is the software as a service uh, provision, which I think uh, we touched on very briefly earlier on. 
but this is uh, a, a kind of growing number of third party organizations which host and uh, run models on your behalf. So they offer various commercial services, consultancy, and full support with running these models. Um, and some of them provide custom user interfaces. You know, got an example at the bottom there of the, the one provided by NASDAQ. So we've got a couple highlighted on the right here, NASDAQ, who run a system called Risk Modeling for Catastrophes, uh, um, NRMC. Uh, this is a, a kind of traditional software as a service. You can sign up with NASDAQ and uh, get access to a website or an API layer where you can uh, license and, and run models directly th through them. Impact Forecasting now have uh, Oasis embedded in their Elements platform, so you can run um, you can run through Elements. Exceedance have a slightly different operation where, where they will run things for you um, themselves, so you can send your exposure data to them. They can do some cleanup on that and run the models and provide you with results. And then we should add to this now, as, as Dickie mentioned earlier on, RMS, uh, who have just started integrating Oasis into their own uh, new platform as well to offer uh, as a as a third party service. So those at a very high level are, are the kind of four options you have for running running models in Oasis at the moment. Um, I think moving on, this is this is the last slide. We'll go into questions in a second, but just to point out, the the YouTube clip is there. We do have quite a lot of uh, example walkthroughs of how you can install and run models in Oasis in any of those fashions that I've described on the YouTube channel. So I'd encourage you to go there. And our GitHub page as well has a lot of example models and a lot of documentation around how to do this kind of thing. I'll hand back to Matt if you want to take over and see if there are any questions. Or sure. If anyone has any questions, if you want to. Yeah, up. thanks, Ben. So um, I appreciate that was a, a whistle stop tour of, of Oasis. We didn't want to go into too much technical detail, obviously um, tailoring it for, for the audience. but. Um, I'm just wondering whether there's um, any questions. I can't see any at the moment. So either people are being shy and uh, one, have we got one? one are there plans for an ODS format for validation data? That's a great question. And it's actually quite timely because it's something as of this morning we um, have started working on. Uh, it's not, not available yet, but we are working with... Um, some people some experts in the market who are well experienced with model validation um and that's a really a really good question i don't i don't have anything to add but yes is the answer we're working on it but i'm sure dickie can maybe elaborate a bit more on that yeah well let me just add a couple of things matt um so um i mean i think that the, the interesting thing about validation is that um, there aren't standards on um, the documentation issued by modeling firms there aren't standards on um uh, on data sets that can be used for validation. Um, so I think it's a really weak area and we've been talking about it for some time. So as Matt says, we're trying to make some progress in all of those areas. So I think um, we're going to be doing something, but anybody on this call, including uh, you, Ashley, feel like you, you know, you'd know, you like to say, well, this is what I really like. This is what we really need. Um, we'll, we can take that away and build that into whatever we're going to do. So yeah, good question. Okay. Um... Any more? This might be a lot shorter session than we anticipated, <laughs> but uh, maybe give 30 seconds. I don't know. I'm looking at my colleagues here. Do we have any any other points we'd like to discuss or raise while we have the opportunity with an audience? If there aren't any more questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Are there plans to have a converter from some of the vendor formats to ODS? Another very good timely question, and I will pass over to Ben <laughs> to answer that, actually. So, yeah, we we, we have been working with the institutes um, on uh, a, a, an open source conversion tool. Uh, it's it's a, a bit of a tricky question because some of the um, some of the vendor formats are proprietary, so we can't build completely open um, conversion tools between them. But. The way we've addressed this is to build uh, an open tool with kind of pluggable conversion logic. And then we intend to publish kind of recognized um, foundational conversion logic between the common formats where we can, and they can then be tweaked um, by individual users if there are specific um, conversion features or 
conversion logic that you you want to override the standard. So we are building, uh, we have built a an open source transformation tool, um, and we will be building that into Oasis. So you should be able to plug the Oasis platform uh, into alternate input formats, and it will do the conversion for you. Um, but it will stand alone as well. So if you wanted to use that uh, by itself, you could do that. Um, there are also a few uh, a few services out there, commercial services doing this. So uh, I know uh, Aon Impact Workbench offer this as a, a commercial offering. Um, some of the brokers do it themselves. So Guy Carpenter have have an internal conversion tool that they use, and they can do that conversion um, to 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 uh, to get the data into OED. Uh, I mean the RMS platform integration they've been talking about they will be doing the conversion themselves so they'll be going from their um rdos format into oed in order to interact with oasis models and they've they've, they've mentioned that they intend to start accepting oed as an input format as well so it's so the short answer is there, there are open source offerings there um they, they're still being tested and validated by the market but there are also commercial offerings and, and companies that will do this for you Oh, is that the one? Okay. So, um, so I'll just move this over to Dickie. Dickie again. Um, so I just thought um, maybe probably finishing, unless any other questions appear in the next uh, couple of minutes. But uh, um, um, actually, let me just answer quickly. I'd maybe just answer answer one question that's just popped up on. Is Oasis working with vendors to incorporate ODS into the import and export workflows? Um, yes, I mean, I think really what the, the solution that Ben's just described, you know, will be open source and available for everybody and should be embedded into, or would be able to be embedded into any workflow in any systems, I think is the answer to that question. Um, so I thought I should probably just going to end, and as Matt, well, Matt, I'll hand back to Matt if he's got something else he wants to say too, but um, with a couple of sort of, you know, things that are going on happening what's next um so one of them is we we run events around the world so um we've just had uh, london as we've a couple of us already mentioned we got uh, our event in zurich with swiss re happening on september the 6th i think yeah um and then we're already working on next year's london event um next uh, event in paris one in bermuda and possibly a new one in the United States as well. So we'll have many of those, and you'll find out. You can find all these on our, on the event part of our website. Um, we've got some new interesting models coming out. Um, I think we've got one on renewables, but we can't say who it is quite yet. Um, so that's going to be an interesting one. That's going to be launched more or less uh, at our event in Zurich, I think. Um, and we've got a ransomware model coming up. Um, that's being and that's going to be fully open and and uh, and free, at least for year one. Um, and we've actually talked to two other organizations that we're, we're talking to right now putting about putting cyber models into Oasis as well. So we got that going on. Um, we've already talked a little bit about the work we're doing on validation, although that's only just starting. Um, but we're also about to start a project to build in conjunction with the IDF, a global exposure model. And if anybody on this call is interested in that or think they have some expertise or some specifications that you think are vital to have in that, we'd love to have your views on that. So please send an um, email to info at oaclmf.org is probably the easiest way or one of us, whatever you prefer. Um, and that's uh, that's going on too. So, you know, part of what I perhaps didn't say right up front is apart from the software and the community, that means we can take on these type of projects with um, both the expertise that sits within and outside the team, but also perhaps more importantly, the independence that we have. So we hope that today was going to be um, a refresher for some, perhaps a few new things that are going on, um, but mostly focused on people that had um, less knowledge of exactly what Oasis is, and we hope you got that. Um, and, um, you know, please uh, keep in touch any way you wish. Newsletter coming out shortly, which people will be able to follow. That says what's going on, and uh, we'd like to keep in contact. So that's all from me. Anybody else? My colleagues want to add something there? No? Wonderful. Well, great. Thanks all very much. We'll sign off for now, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.